What do I mean by saying you are not a cow? What I'm referring to is the fact that we've been told by government agencies, by dietitians, by doctors, by the American Heart Association, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, American Diabetes Association, and just about everybody else who dispenses dietary advice, they all agree that we should have our diets dominated by grains, healthy whole grains, right? Well, let's think about that for a moment. Grains are the seeds of grass. That's what they literally are. They're seeds of grasses, whether it's wheat, millet, rye, barley, oats, corn, uh, etc. They're all seeds of grasses. Now, the problem comes when we try to digest any component of the grasses of the earth. So we know that ruminants like cows and goats and horses are almost exclusively grass eaters, grass and, and other related plants. Well, they can consume those foods because they have teeth that grow continuously all throughout their lives. We grow teeth twice in our lives, right? They have a dent, what's called a dental pad, a pro, bony protrusion on the top of their mouths that allows them to grab grass. They produce about 100 liters of saliva per day. We produce about one liter or a quart of saliva per day. They have a specialized four compartment stomach with one of the compartments that provides a grinding function to further break down the, uh, the grasses. They also often bring back up the undigested grasses and chew their cud, right? They also have unique microorganisms and fungi in their four compartment stomachs to help break down the grasses. Uh, we don't have those things, of course. They have a spiral, a lengthy spiral colon to provide more surface area and length uh, to help break down what remains to be digested in the grasses. We, of course, have a much shorter colon that has a couple of turns in it. In other words, it requires very special adaptations that evolved over millions and millions of years to allow them to consume the, co consume the components of the grasses of the earth. We have none of those adaptations. And of course, we cannot eat the roots of grasses, we can't eat the stalk, we can't eat the leaves, we can't eat the husks. We try to eat the seeds, but even the seeds are largely indigestible. In other words, the proteins, like the gliadin protein, the gluten protein, the glutenin proteins, wheat germaglutinin protein, multiple proteins in wheat and related grasses, seeds of grasses, are only uh, partially digestible or completely indigestible. The gliadin protein, for instance, would be an example of, an, of a partially digestible protein. And rather than breaking down the single amino acids, like other proteins, such as those in a pork chop or a steak or an egg, the uh, gliadin protein is broken down to four or five amino acid long peptides. And that's because we lack the enzymes that break the amino acid sequences in the gliadin protein. So these peptides result and these are very toxic to the gastrointestinal tract and also act as opioids on the human brain, driving appetite and having other mind effects, behavioral outbursts in kids with ADHD and autistic spectrum disorder, uh, depression and people prone to depression, the manic phase in people with bipolar illness, auditory hallucinations, hearing voices, and paranoia in people with paranoid schizophrenia. 24-hour-day food obsessions of people with bulimia and binge eating disorder. You and I, who don't have those conditions, uh, typically experience appetite stimulation, uh, prompting us to take in, on average, 400 to 800, and sometimes as much as 1,500 more calories per day. It's an appetite stimulant. That's because we cannot digest the gliadin protein down to amino acids. Wheat germ agglutinin is another protein in uh, wheat and uh, related grains that is completely indigestible. In other words, we simply lack the digestive apparatus to break down most of the proteins in wheat and related grains, the seeds of grasses. Yes, we can digest the amylopectin sugars, the carbohydrate. That's why grains are also responsible for extravagant rises in blood sugar, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, etc. But the key, the key point here is that the proteins of the seeds of grasses are largely indigestible. And that's why they're responsible for so many varied health consequences, like triggering autoimmune diseases and blocking cholecystokinin that blocks digestion. It has a whole array of effects because of the indigestibility of the proteins of the seeds of grasses, grains.